There's a lot rolling on your motorcycle tires, but do you know what is below the tread rubber or do you know the difference between a bias ply tire and a radial tire? No? Well, lucky for you, we're going to explain in this video from the MC Garage. Despite all the different sizes and purposes and appearances, motorcycle tires only really come in two varieties. You've got your bias ply or cross belt tires as they are sometimes called, and you've got your radials. Up until the 70s, all bikes were rolling on bias ply, but then as motorcycles started to get more powerful and people were riding faster and dragging me around corners and overheating tires on the banking at Daytona, it became clear that a better technology was needed, and hence radials. Before I explain how bias ply and radial tires are different, let's do a brief tire anatomy lesson because the parts of a tire are going to be similar regardless of the design. If you take a look at a cross section of a tire like the one we have here, which was generously provided by Pirelli specifically for the show, you will see the tread cap, which is the rubber portion that rolls down the road. Beneath that are layers of fabric that create the tire's carcass and give it its structure and those layers extend down to create the tire sidewall and wrap around the bead, which is a thick steel cable. All of it is splashed in rubber and more or less represents the components of a tire, whether that tire is a bias ply or a radial. The difference between the two is in how those fabric layers, called carcass plies, are oriented. On a bias ply tire, the layers, which are often made of aramid or polyester or nylon, are laid down diagonally, hence the term bias, in a crisscross pattern from one bead of the tire all the way over to the other bead. Occasionally, an additional layer or two of fabric will be laid just on the tread portion to strengthen that section, but the fabric is still at a diagonal, and in general, the construction of both the tread and the sidewall are similar, so they have similar thicknesses and flex properties. On radial tires, however, the carcass plies are laid down perpendicular to the bead rather than at an angle, and that gives you a more flexible sidewall. There's also going to be a belting package beneath the tread, and that is going to be made of either steel cable or aramid thread, and it only exists beneath the tread, and it's there to stiffen that area of the tire. So with a radial tire, the tread and the sidewall have independent constructions, and what that means is that those areas of the tire have different flex properties. That's obviously really important if you're trying to design a tire with very particular behaviors. And with the radial, you're not stuck compromising the tread rigidity versus sidewall flexibility like you are on a bias ply, which again, has that uniform construction. What it boils down to is two families of tires with different behaviors. In general, bias ply tires are going to have a more robust construction. They're gonna have taller sidewalls and rounder profiles. That may have worked well for bikes back in the day, and it might still be a good fit for bikes like cruisers and touring rigs, but back in the 70s, bias ply tires were overheating because they couldn't handle the horsepower the bikes were making, and they weren't providing the handling that riders needed. Enter the radial. First seen in the automotive world shortly after World War II, radials first appeared on motorcycles in the 80s on the 500 GP bike of one fresh-faced Freddie Spencer. Rather than relying on layer after layer of fabric to build its structure, like a bias ply does, a radial tire might have just two carcass plies and one steel belt. So what you get is a lighter tire that manages its heat better. And because you can tune the stiffness of the tread and the sidewall independently, you can design a tire with optimized flexibility, which gets you better grip, better handling, and a lot of other benefits. Also, with radial technology, you're able to design a tire that has a large tread area and a short sidewall, as is common on modern sport bikes. So radials are better for high-speed applications, where handling and outright traction is the priority. Meanwhile, bias ply, even though it is an old technology, is still a good fit for larger, heavier, slower bikes because the tire's more robust design offers more load capacity and durability. Also, bias ply tires are a must if you're rolling on old school spoke rims since modern radials aren't meant to be used with the tube. That's all because the soft lining on a tubeless radial will supposedly create a lot of friction and thus heat if used with the tube and that's not a good situation. All that being said, I will admit that I have run tubes in radials on spoke wheels without a problem, but in general the manufacturers do not recommend it. In the end, radials are the newer, more sophisticated technology, and they claim the lion's share of the marketplace. Still, bias ply tires are popular on a certain kind of motorcycle. 
it's not about which technology is newer or more advanced, but more about what type of motorcycle the tire is being put on and how that bike will be ridden. All right, so that is a crash course on the two types of tires that are out there rolling around on the road. Hopefully that makes you more informed, but if you've got any further questions, by all means, leave them in the comment section below. We appreciate you guys watching. We hope you'll subscribe. Until next time, ride safe.